In the last episode of my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course, I showed you how to remove your background. I've only kind of teased the settings to actually improve how you look in your webcam view. And that is what we're doing today. Today, we're going to try to make yourself look better. Well, I can't really help you with that one, but I can help make your webcam look better. For this, we're going to use a couple different tools here. This is the latest episode of my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course sponsored by Streamlabs. We've covered how to set up your stream layouts, including this dope retro computer layout that I just discovered in the past episode, how to green screen, how to master your audio, best encoding settings, all that jazz. Today, we are tweaking webcam. Now, I'm using the Logitech MX Brio here, and I've actually been pretty impressed with how it looks out of the box. Like, this has just been on auto settings, and for the most part, I don't have any major complaints. If you do want to improve things, you have some options available to you. First, we're going to look into the UVC controls. These are the just default webcam color controls built into Windows or any operating system technically, but they're most accessible here in Windows. And for that, we're going to double click our webcam source and click configure video. Now, depending on the webcam you're using, you may have different means of interacting with your webcam's color settings. This is just the default universal webcam configuration here. There is a lot of sliders. It's easy to get overwhelmed. The good news is most modern webcams look pretty great out of the box, especially if you have good lighting and a good setup. So you won't have to mess with a ton, but I will go through what they mean for you. I've been covering these for years, so I have plenty of old videos you may have referenced already. Starting at the top, we have some basic controls that apply to all video sources. Brightness, contrast, saturation. Brightness is literally just the artificial, like, how bright is your white point in your video. So if you find that it's a little too bright and the camera-specific controls don't work out for you, you can mess with them here. I will say, this first tab here, I hate that it's the first tab. Uh, I don't know why UVC sets like UVC controls are set up that way. This is it's called video processing amp. This is all things that happen to your webcam after it's already kind of been taken in to the computer. So this is all amplifying what's already here. The second tab is camera control. This controls the actual webcam settings itself, depending on, you know, different webcams will have different settings available, but this controls your actual webcam. So I I'm going to recommend starting with camera control. I'll walk through all the sliders. You have zoom. This one is a little bit artificial, um, but it does let you zoom in on the webcam itself. It obviously most webcams do not have optical zoom. This one does not either, but it allows you to zoom in on a chunk of the video prior to it coming into your computer, which there might be an advantage to that. I don't really know what that would be. Maybe slightly better compression. And then you have the ability to pan and tilt that before it comes in. We're not really going to mess with that because to me that's not super useful unless you really just need to zoom in a tiny bit. So we're going to zoom all the way back out. You also have a focus slider. So most webcams have some degree of an autofocus. And like I said, on the MX Brio out of the box, it seems to stay focused on me pretty well. But if you find that not to be the case, you can uncheck autofocus on most webcams and change your focus. So when you're adjusting this, all the way to the right is gonna be the minimum focus distance for your webcam. And so you can see here, if I get right up on it, this webcam actually has a surprising close focus distance. Most webcams require you to be pretty far back. This is like two inches, three inches away. That's not bad. And then all the way to the left is going to be infinity focus, which is focused all the way to the back. For webcams, that's not gonna be very far. I'm sitting maybe two-ish feet from my webcam here. And putting at it at infinity focus is almost focused on me already. If I bring it back up, it starts to focus on me a bit more. But we're going to use autofocus and it will find me. But the manual focus slider is there if you don't think your webcam's doing a good enough job of focusing on you. Or if you don't want it to pulse. Like if you move around a lot and find that it's constantly hunting for you. Turning that off and just locking it to where you sit on average may be beneficial to the stability of your video. The most crucial slider on the direct camera control... Some webcams have an aperture iris option, very few. Most of them just have this one exposure option, which is a weird combination of ISO or gain, which is basically how much it amplifies the image sensor for light sensitivity, and shutter speed, which is how quickly it updates the video, which determines brightness as well. You can leave this on auto if you'd like. On most webcams, even the best ones, through these specific controls, Auto exposure is terrible. You can see right now I look super washed out. Things look a little funky. It's something to do with the way UVC controls work. Instead, you can customize it with this slider. You can see here, 
The further back I go, it goes all the way to pitch black and really messes with my green screen. But something you will notice is that it's increasing the shutter speed. And so you'll actually start to get smoother motion, especially if you're aiming for that 60 FPS video. It's just going to be harder to light and keep well lit. Whereas if you slow it down, you can get brighter and brighter video. But you look way more laggy and ghosty because it's got such a slow shutter speed. I'm going to set it back to minus five, which is where it is. That seems to be good lighting for me. I seem evenly exposed. I don't have any overly hot spots. I have good contrast, which we can also tweak later. If you do, for example, think that maybe minus four is better for your exposure, but you don't like the contrast, we can tweak that in the next tab. But I'm going to leave it at minus five. And then lastly, if you're shooting without any sort of lighting or you're just finding that it's not doing a good enough job, you do have low light compensation as a checkbox. I've never found this to do anything significant on most worthwhile webcams because these controls will already do most of it. Next, we'll move over to the video processing amp, which again is acting more in post, like after the main set. Like, like think about it if you're using a real camera. If you set your settings, such as ISO, shutter speed, your aperture of your lens, these kinds of settings are like exposure compensation after the fact or taking the image into Photoshop and brightening it up after the fact, those kinds of things. So you're going to get some gnarly effects. So for example, if we crank down our exposure, like say our webcam only goes up this bright or we don't have good lighting or whatever, and we still need additional brightness, instead of brightness, you can do that. But notice how it just kind of flattens everything. You also have a gain slider, which adds amplitude to your image sensor's image to try to get more exposure out of it, which absolutely works, but it can do so at the cost of introducing additional noise to your image. You're not going to see it in most Twitch streams because it's going to get compressed out anyway. But especially once you start dialing it up, it can get a little noisy. And you can see here, it really starts to affect the color key on the side of my microphone because it is so noisy. It is always worth it to get as close as you can with exposure without getting too ghosty and then increase gain from there if desirable. So maybe I'll turn it up a little bit. And then from there, if you're having some real like the entire white level of your image is just off too much, then you can play with brightness. But frankly, I do not like playing with brightness at all. I think it washes out the image way too quickly. Contrast lighter bumps the difference between the brightest and the darkest parts of your image. So if we turn it all the way down, we are completely washed out. If we turn it all the way up, we are super punchy mode. Typically, you only want to turn it up a little bit, if at all, just to give you that extra bit of punch. Saturation increases how much of the colors that you see. I find a lot of webcams either oversaturate out of the box or undersaturate. Rarely do I find them to be right in the middle. And so I like turning it up just a little bit. If we go too far, we look like a 90s comic book kind of movie. Just turn it up just a little bit over the default of 128. Sharpness applies sharpness in post. This is not going to increase real sharpness. It's going to just add contrast to the edges, which if we crank up, we get like a posterization kind of filter. If we crank down, we get a little bit blurry. Webcams are designed to have a little bit applied. So I like going all the way down and then cranking up a little bit. You don't need to be overly sharp. Most movies and stuff are not sharp, shot super sharp. There's a backlight compensation option, which did have an effect. I actually like having that off. But then we need to turn down our contrast. And then maybe turn up gain a little bit. That actually, actually, no, now my face is getting too. See, it, it's going to be a push and a pull as you mess with these settings to figure out where you want them to be in your setup. It's going to be a push and a pull. White balance. This is the color temperature of your lighting. I am using about 4,500 Kelvin lighting as my key light. It's just what I find to be most pleasing. So I have set that here. You can see here, if you crank it one way, you get too blue. If you crank it the other way, you get too orange. Unfortunately, there is not a tint slider in UVC controls, which is necessary because temperature is blue to yellow. Tint is green to pink. A proper white balance is constructed of both of those. Unfortunately, UVC controls never provide that. So you're going to have to get as close as you can or use auto white balance, which frankly, on a lot of modern webcams, even this one, mostly does a good job and can actually utilize tint in the auto control, which is annoying. Auto is fine here with this camera. If I turn it off, I do get a little too blue because I don't have that extra green tint control. I think it looks fine. I like keeping it off because especially if you have RGB lights in the background or 
clouds that come through a window or something it can kind of change as you go and it's kind of weird to like jump around in a stream vod and see your skin color changing over time so that is the nerdy technical details that i think you should mess with before you do anything creative because this is getting your camera looking correct you don't necessarily need to stylize it here you just need to get it looking correct here now there's also the power line frequency if you are in 50 hertz like pal regions europe whatever you can change it here north america japan should have it on 60 hertz but now we can start getting fancy with this and changing how our webcam actually looks with filters. So I'm going to right click our webcam source, go to filters and edit filters. Now Streamlabs actually provides visual presets here in your filter control with a bunch of different color options already built in. These are basically just like baked in LUTs that you have the option of. You can go grayscale, sepia tone, old school. Then they have ones like dramatic where it's just like cranking the contrast and saturation. It makes me look kind of sunburned in this instance. <laughs> flashback which just gives it like that kind of noiry look action movie i think it's supposed to go for that teal and orange kind of look it honestly just adds a little bit of contrast to me i don't mind it definitely emphasizes my colored lighting over here i got that john wick look going on just a couple different like basic little luts and then we got heat map which if you want to go really creative can do some funky stuff with cell shade makes it really comic booky as well so you have those available you could play with but then you can also add any gamut of filters here. I will say there are audio and video filters mixed in here, so you'll need to be a little bit careful of what you choose, but there is a color correction filter. So if we add that, we get control over gamma, contrast, brightness, saturation. Hue shift will help you balance your white balance a little bit better. So here we can add more contrast. I would recommend not, like I said, not doing too much stylization in the UVC controls and then adding more of that in these kinds of settings. Crank up saturation. Yeah. You can play with it to really kind of tweak your image. Here, you can also add sharpening. So if you find your webcam too blurry, you can add a little bit. Just be careful not to overdo it because, again, you get into that weird territory. But just a little bit can sometimes help. Again, more sharp details are harder to compress in video. So you don't want to spend too much time cranking that up because it's going to make it harder to get good quality out of your video and it's going to just end up making you look worse so if we play with this a bit gamma is like overall brightness levels of the image it's a little bit different than br uh, brightness you generally don't need to mess with it too much i'm gonna shift it up a little bit just because my shirt's so dark we increase saturation a touch contrast a touch and then added sharpness and just keep in mind you can actually drag and drop to reorder these and so you may end up wanting to do this before your chroma key to help your chroma key look more stable and then you do have the option to apply a LUT. So I mentioned this before. A LUT is called, it's called a LUT. It's a color lookup table. And it basically maps colors from one direction to another. You can do a lot of stuff with these, especially creative looks. They are most useful when you're working with like log or raw video instead of a standard webcam feed. But if you have LUTs available, you can use this. So I'm going to go acquire a creative LUT here. The internet is full of infinite amounts of dramatic LUTs and cinematic LUTs and stylistic LUTs and whatever. I'm just going to download a couple from a stock library to demonstrate. Obviously, I'm not specifically endorsing these for any individual purpose. I'm just picking up ones that I think will be dramatic enough to show a difference. Now, these LUTs can be made available in .png or .cube format, and often they are designed for specific photo or video editors, so they may not all work for you. So... Your results may vary. I've covered LUTs extensively on the channel in the past, including how to make your own in DaVinci Resolve, among other things. So you can check out my past videos for that. Here we have a bunch of duotone LUTs that are just going to like separate you into two colors. If you want like a really stylistic view, if that's part of the theme, I like that one for your like color scheme or whatever. And then you have a, a slider for how much it actually applies to your video. Obviously, those are very like specific. You may not always want those, but I'm just like I said, I'm trying to go for something super dramatic that you can obviously see what's happening. These are fresh LUTs, which are supposed to be like 80s style or something. Again, on a standard webcam video, all you're going to get is it's basically like Instagram filters. I hate to say that, but like a lot of these LUTs are basically just going to be like cool Instagram filters, which some people want for their webcam. Some people think that just normal webcams are boring, which I 100% support. And so you have this option available to you to get kind of funky creative looks. You just got to be careful because it will start to break your image with too much saturation or whatever. And maybe since I did 
that here, I want to turn off my color correction. And maybe even then I want to turn down the filter a little bit. And LUTs you will most likely want after a color key or chroma key if you've done that because it can affect the green that you've already detected. So even if the other ones you do go before it, that one is just, it's making me too pink. It's irking me. Obviously play around, source them from wherever you like. But that is how you customize your webcam, how to make yourself look beautiful or different or more unique within Streamlabs desktop. Lots of really good stuff there. And the whole LUTs and color grading rabbit hole goes super deep. Like I said, I have tons of videos on my channel and there's no end of videos and LUT packs and whatever available on the internet to you if you wish. So that is it here for episode 13 of my Streamlabs desktop tutorial course. In the next episode, we're going to cover collab cam, which is how you collaborate with other creators here in Streamlabs. And then we'll wrap up with covering the mobile apps because they have some really powerful stuff over on mobile. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, go check out the tutorial playlist in the comments or description and comment section down below. And remember to be kind. Rewind. Rewind.